25-year-old Diane Maxwell was dead. There's still so much left to be answered. Hi, and welcome to Spacebound, where today we'll be looking at 10 of the biggest unsolved mysteries that have finally been solved. Number 10, Diane Maxwell. Technological advancements have made all the difference in solving crimes, especially those once lost and cold in time. In 1969, 25-year-old Diane Maxwell was in the workplace parking lot of her job as a phone operator when she was taken away into the wooden shack to be sexually assaulted and stabbed by an unknown person. The only witness, William Bell, couldn't identify the man after calling police. Fingerprints were found on Maxwell's stolen car, but the case led nowhere due to a lack of forensics technology at the time. It wouldn't be until 2003, 34 years later, that a case would reopen and FBI would secure a match of fingerprints by James Ray Davis, a known criminal who had been released from prison just nine days before Maxwell's death. He'd of course deny everything until being shown DNA and print evidence and was given a life sentence for his crimes. Number 9. The Grateful Doe The internet juggernaut known as Reddit is a very odd place of wonder. Without it, however, there are thousands of questions, cases, and mysteries that could still remain unanswered. One unsolved mystery resurfaced 20 years later when, in 2015, a Redditor opened up a subreddit known as Grateful Doe. In recognition of a man who was never identified after a fatal car crash on the way to a Grateful Dead concert on June 26, 1995. Reconstructed images of the deceased man surfaced receiving widespread attention over the internet and eventually catching the eye of the mystery man's own mother, who would soon identify him as Jason Callahan. A missing persons report was never followed by Mrs. Callahan for various reasons, which explains why the evidence from the car crash never really helped solve the case. But finally, the investigation was reopened with DNA tests concluding Callahan has been found. Number 8. The McStay Family on February 4th of 2010, months after moving into their new San Diego home, the McStay family had mysteriously vanished. There was no signs of forced entry or foul play when an investigation began, however, it did seem like they were in a hurry to get out. Paint cans and food were left out and open, while the family also left behind their two dogs. The father, Joseph McStay, also held more than $100,000 at his bank account at the time, which remained untouched. On February 8th, the family's car was found near the Mexican border, but the trail became cold. Nearly four years later, the McStay's remains are found buried outside of Victorville, California, nearly 150 miles from their San Diego home. While the family's whereabouts were finally known, many questions remain unanswered at the moment, primarily how and why. Currently, as of mid-2018, Chase Merritt, a former business partner of Joseph's, is believed to have been involved in the McStay's disappearance. Charles Chase Merritt was identified as the suspect responsible for the death of Joseph, Summer, Gianni, and Joseph McStay. The cause of death was determined to be blunt force trauma, and based on the entire investigation and the evidence obtained, investigators believe these murders occurred at their residence in Fallbrook. Number 7. Rainia Marroquin. The discovery of a woman's mummified body found inside a 55-gallon drum was made in September 99, when a family was in the midst of moving into their new home in Nassau country, New York. Thanks to forensics, the lady was later identified as Renya Marroquin, an immigrant from El Salvador whom, at the time of her murder, was nine months pregnant. Her death was soon linked to Howard B. Elkins, a man Renya worked with for, for the former homeowner where the barrel was found. During the case, however, Elkins committed suicide and was soon after identified as the father of Renya's unborn child through the DNA analysis. It was concluded that the married Elkins was having an affair with Renya, but when she was to tell Elkins' wife about their children, he murdered her and hid her in the barrel. The happening was in 1969, 30 years before Renya was found. One final message from Renya and her address book read, Don't be mad, I told the truth. Did you ever use this type of a barrel in your business? No, we never had any barrels like that. No, we never had any barrels like that. Did you ever use a dye known as halogen green? No, we never used the chemical. We had no need to use the chemical. There were plastic pellets found in the barrel, and we believe that they were used in your business. Is that right? I don't know. I don't know what they would have been used for. Number six, Lori Ruff. 
It would occur in 2010 when Lori Erica Ruff would take her own life, but not without leaving some truly puzzling documents behind. Lori was an identity thief whose true origins would remain shrouded in mystery until 2016, six years after her passing. The woman's story begins in 1971 when she was known as Becky Sue Turner. However, the real Becky died in a house fire in Washington State that year. Details are scarce from then on, but along the way, Lori had grabbed onto some name named Lori Kennedy, which eventually became Lori Ruff after marrying Blake Ruff in 2004. Following Lori's death in 2010, investigators acquired DNA samples from the Ruff family, which led to a first cousin, Michael Cassidy, from Philadelphia. He saw a photo of Lori and confirmed her true identity as Kimberly McLean, a woman who'd ran away from her Pennsylvania home when she was 18. Number 5. Susan Schwarz Imagine having a set of playing cards be your own downfall. This case occurred in October 1979, when Susan Schwarz was shot in the middle of her shower at home. There was insufficient proof leading to an indictment, with no reported witnesses at the time of the crime. Eventually, a set of playing cards were released in 2008, which featured cold cases and offers of rewards for information linked to their safety. Susan was the Queen of Hearts. It wasn't until 2011, however, when a tip by a prison inmate playing with the cards would lead investigators to a then 58-year-old Gregory Johnson. The motive? Schwarz was interfering in her friend's abusive marriage with Johnson. More than 32 years later, his ex-wife and friend of Susan, along with another unidentified witness, spoke out about the case, leading Johnson to receive a 24-year-long prison sentence. Susan was, was everything to me. That there had never been a, 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 a girl in the Swartz side of the family. And I got to admit, when, when she came along, she was, she was the greatest thing that was imaginable. Number four, Benjamin Kyle. Sometime in August 2004, a totally random, naked, and utterly beaten person was found lodged between a set of dumpsters outside of Burger King in Jacksonville, Georgia. He had no clue what he was doing there, what happened, or even who he was, until he was nicknamed BK, which eventually became Benjamin Kyle for the next decade. BK went on a searching for answers, hoping to solve his missing identity. He appeared on news channels and even talk shows, including The Jeff Probst Show and Dr. Phil. Finally, in 2015, a genetic genealogist by the name of C.C. Moore worked with Benjamin to track down his past and found more than what they were expecting. It turned out he had been missing longer than before being found outside the Burger King. In fact, Ben ran away from home in 1976 and hadn't spoken a word to his family since. They have, of course, reunited since, which probably wouldn't have happened if Ben didn't lose his memory in the first place. Kind of ironic. Uh, in the last hour, I have gone from a, a ghost just walking through society with no ID, no, no, I didn't exist, and now all of a sudden I'm legal, I have, I have an ID. Number three, Pamela Jackson and Cheryl Miller. Not every closed case will come with a happy ending, but they don't always have an evil revelation either. In May 1971, Pamela Jackson and Cheryl Sherry Miller were on their way to a quarry party with classmates, but they never showed. When no one heard from the two girls, friends, family, and locals assumed the worst. Bodies were never found, and neither was their car, a 1960 Strudbaker. It wasn't until 2013, more than 40 years after the incident, that a shocking discovery was made at Brule Creek, where the accident occurred. Pamela and Cheryl were found inside with all their belongings, including a wristwatch, which had stopped at the time 10.20 p.m., the assumed time of the crash. One unexpected victim from this case, however, is David Lichen, who was falsely convicted for the two girls' deaths after a fake confession was released by a jailhouse snitch. The car was found Monday when someone walking by saw tires sticking out. The license plate on the car matched the one that was on the Studebaker Lark the two girls were last seen driving. They were following a group of boys to a party at a nearby gravel pit. Number two, Aiton Pates. It was the abrupt disappearance of six-year-old Aiton while on his way to a school bus in Manhattan Soto, which would shake New York to its core in May 1979. The case was kept open until 2001 with no leads, leading to the possible return of Aiton, or an indictment of the crime. Suddenly, investigators of Aiton's appearance had something and continued working in 2010. But it wouldn't be until 2012 when the mystery would be solved from the Pates family when they would have their closure. The culprit? Pedro Hernandez. 
He worked at a local corner shop, which was on Aiton's way to the bus, offered the little boy a drink, and confessed his wrongdoings. 33 years later, members of Hernandez families backed up his confession in court, leading him to a life sentence as of April 18th, 2017. The Pate's family has waited a long time, but we finally have found some measure of justice for our wonderful little boy, Aiton. I'm really grateful that this jury finally came back with what I have known for a long time, that this man, Pedro Hernandez, is guilty of doing something really terrible. And finally, number one, Michael Henley Jr. In spring of 1988, nine-year-old Michael Henley was headed out on a camping trip with his father and family friend in the Zuni Mountains. The trip was cut short, though, when Michael vanished from the campsite only after 20 minutes. Various searches were made in the area, but no leads. Undoubtedly, the weirdest part of this mystery had to have been a photo which surfaced out of Florida parking lot a year later, which featured two children bound and gagged. According to the Henley family, the boy in the photo resembled Michael, along with the girl resembling Tara Calico, whom also went missing only a few months after Michael. Both were also from New Mexico. Another year would pass when, in 1990, Michael's remains were found a few miles away from the original campsite after dental records helped to identify him. He likely succumbed to hyperthermia as no injuries were found. The mystery behind the two kids in the photo remained unsolved, but any connection to Michael has been debunked. Talk about a cliffhanger. And with that being said, that concludes what are 10 of the biggest unsolved mysteries that have been solved. Feel free to comment what you thought about today's video and maybe leave a like if you've enjoyed. Also, don't forget to subscribe and push that notification button to see more Spacebound videos similar to this one in the near future. And have yourselves an excellent day.